Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we've got in front of us one of the Militarum Tempestus Scions, or, to shift things up a little bit, Kazakin. Now, for those of you who might be fairly new to 40k, maybe you've not come across that term before, so let's do a bit of a dive into some of the history and we'll explain what that is. Now, way back in the storied days of 2003, <laughs> along came Codex Eye of Terror. And in there was one of the first sort of really deep dives into Cadian lore that we'd had before. Now, what that gave us was that they were able to take units that were, at the time, called Grenadiers as troops in their army. Now, they were comparable to stormtroopers at the time, which we'd now call Militarum Tempestus. So... Like I said, there's <laughs> there's a fair bit going on name-wise. And if it goes over your head the first time, don't worry too much about it. We're going to stick to the cool part. Now, what happened a couple of years later is we got the new Imperial Guard Codex in 2005, I think. And there came out a bunch of new miniatures that were called Kazurkin. Now, a Kazur, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, they were the fortresses of Old Cadia. And though the world itself has been destroyed in the new you know, as the timeline has progressed, there are still planets in the Cadian system, and fighting there continues. So the Khazar Kin, they were guys who were trained and equipped to the same degree as the Militarum Tempestus are. So what it means, if you've got a Cadian army, what you might consider is painting a couple of squads of Militarum Tempestus up as these guys, Khazar Kin, to match the rest of your army. So as you can see, the miniatures are exactly the same. You know, the principles that we're going to use to paint these guys will be identical to anything else that you want to include in your army. But for the sake of a little bit of fluff, you know, a little bit of love for the law, try putting these guys in your army and calling them Kazakhan. See who gets it. <laughs> Anyhow, let's get a look at the paints we're going to use and how you can paint these guys. Now, one of the first things you might notice is that the color palette is incredibly similar to <laughs> the Cadian Guardsmen that I've already painted. So, good news if you happen to be doing a Cadian army, because you'll probably have most of these paints already. To start off with, though, we're going to hit him with a quick dry brush of Dark Reaper. Now, what this is going to do, uh, similarly to the Orlock Ganger that I painted recently, this is just to break up some of the black. It'll give us a little bit of layering, um, and what it'll help do is make it look a little bit more three-dimensional without having to do a lot of work to it. In particular, places like these cables, where normally on the model people leave them black, it'll introduce us a little bit of depth, nice and simple, and then we don't have to mess around with too much of that. After that, we're going to block in all of his armor with Castellan Green, and then we'll do his fatigues in Zandri Dust. Now, as a real quick note, if you wanted to do these guys as the Capic Eagles instead, you know, like they are on the box, Swap in the fang. Easy as that. Everything else will be exactly the same, technique and all. So, just a quick note on that. But we're going to use Castellan Green for our Kazakhan. Then we're going to do all of the metal details in Lead Belcher, including the brass areas. Like I'm always carrying on about, the easiest way to paint a gold or a brassy color first is to lay down some Lead Belcher. So, funnily enough, after we've done the Lead Belcher, we go on <laughs> to Balthazar Gold. Then we're going to do Eshin Grey for anywhere that we want to be a mechanical black. So the top part of the scope on his weapon, for example, this little uh, baffled section he's got on his lasgun barrel, and any other little bits that we want to look, you know, black, but mechanical. Dryad Bark, we'll quickly touch in to do the straps. There's not very many of those, so any leather details. Bugman's Glow for his skin, and then Corn Red, we're going to touch up his beret, and we'll also do uh, this little book on the side here. We'll paint that in corn red too. So without further ado, let's get on to this first dry brush. So not terribly complicated. All you want to do is check the edge. That might be a little bit much, but it doesn't matter too much. We're just going to start lightly dry brushing over the whole model. Uh, it doesn't matter if you end up getting it on anything that you don't want to be black. You know, this is actually going to help us get a look at how the shape of the model will be. So it might sound a little crazy, <laughs> But uh, anywhere that you want to just get an idea of how the shape of the model is going to look while you're painting it, this is quite a good idea, especially on black miniatures, because it can be a little difficult to see the detail. So I just cruise around now. Anywhere that you want the model to be black, you know, make sure you hit it with this. But otherwise, just pop it wherever you fancy, and it'll help give you a look at what the, uh, the model's going to look like. So do what you fancy. 
Now it might look a little bit of a mess so far, but don't worry too much. <laughs> Grab yourself your Castellan Green and start just blopping this all over his armor. And areas on his backpack too, like this power plant thing. I tend to think it looks best if most of it is going to be in the same color as his uh, armor. Scene two, the section of the gun here in the center, this is normally the same color as his armor. So blast in there now. If you can avoid the hands, uh, then that's a good way, you know, just leave those with that dark reaper. And then his gloves are already painted when we come to those details later. Now see that there's a decent chunk of armor on him, so you can have a bit of time going around and making sure that's all covered. But it is important because it's kind of the focal point for the miniature, it's going to be his armor. So what I'm going to do next is get in there with my Zandri Dust and start painting his fatigues. Now some of these areas, like for example on his leg here, where the gun cable gets in the way, you're going to need to <laughs> move things around a little as you're applying it. So you, you, know, you want to try and avoid getting this color on anything you've already painted. Whatever the case though, you can enjoy yourself for a few minutes turning your model upside down this way and that. And you might find in a couple of spots, you'll want to go back over and do another thin coat of Zandri dust. Now I've been quite finicky when putting that on and I've dodged painting the uh, straps on his arms and legs. You won't need to though. And to be honest, I could probably have <laughs> done without that fuss, but force of habit, I just wanted you guys to be able to see where that separation in his uniform is. So what we'll do now is I've got my lead belcher and so begins painting on the metal details. So over the gun, uh, you know, all these little bits and pieces, and then anywhere that's going to be brass later on. So you might want to switch down to a small layer brush for this, but any of this trim that we're going to paint brass later, do this in lead belcher now as well. Okay. So if there's going to be a, a hard part or a slow part to this painting job, it's probably this, but take your time. And if you make any mistakes, you can just bust out the old Castellan green again. Okay. So now that I've filled in all of those middle areas, you can see as well, I remembered he has that ground sheet on the top of his pack <laughs> and I hit that with some Zandri dust at the same time. There's a fair bit of metal stuff on him though, but what we're going to do now is get into the old Balthazar gold and start painting this over the trim. So again, you'll probably want to swap on down to a small layer brush for this. But just go over the top of that silver in the areas you want to be that nice brassy color. So with that done, we can go on to the last few bits in color. Now I've got here my Eschen gray, and I'm just going to go over these sort of mechanical bits, uh, particularly on the gun, but there's this little bit of sort of cabling uh, coupling here that you can paint in with this. Just anywhere that you want to touch up the, uh, the metallic stuff a little bit, make it a little more interesting. And some dryad bark just to do these straps. Now you don't need to be too careful with these, but this is sort of a tidy up stage. So take a little bit of time and it'll help make the finished product look a bit tidier. Now there aren't many of those straps, but just don't forget the ones, especially across the back of his pack there. That'll, you know, <laughs> that'll look a little funny if you do miss those. Next though, we've got our Buckman's Glow and we're just going to get in here and same as ordinarily would, just base coat his face. You'll probably find over a black undercoat like this, you'll need to let it dry, come back and apply a second coat just to make sure we get a nice even coverage. And then last but not least, we've got a little bit of corn red and we're going to do in his beret. We'll do the book at the same time. And I also recommend doing the lenses. Just water down your paint a little bit more than you normally would for this and get in there just a splatter of that to tighten those up. And with that, that's all of the hard parts done. Now I've also splashed a little bit of Retributor Armor on for his cat badge and the Aquila on his uh, book there. You could do those in, in silver or um, Balthazar gold if you fancied, but I like just a little bit of contrast there. You'll also note that just by being a little bit more careful with your base coat, uh, you can leave the beret's uh, cap band in black, which is a nice easy way to avoid having to go back and paint that. <laughs> Either way though, here comes our boy, Agrax Earthshade. So I've got my shade brush, medium shade brush, 
And as always, we're just going to go over the whole model. Take your time with this. Make sure you're getting it into all of the recesses. That'll be quite important. But just go around now and fill in the whole model with all of this lovely shading. Now that that shade's dried, he's looking a lot better. We can see the depth of the detail on the miniature, and those colors have been darkened down a little, so they're not so flat. Now, what I'm going to do now is bust around and do a few details. Uh, we'll do some highlights on this guy. One thing I do want to point out that I missed, though, is this uh, eagle on the front of his gun here. I had completely skipped over it, but a little bit of Celestra Grey. You might decide that you want to do it uh, silver or gold to match, you know, the other detailing on the on the armor. But I decided to go with white on his gun because it matches the rest of the weapons in my Imperial Guard Force. So that's why that. Anyway, let's skip on to some details. And we'll start off, first of all, with his beret. So I've got here just a little bit of Wazdaka red. And all I'm going to do is a slight touch around the very corner of where it goes and folds over. So, just enough that it stands out on his head. Now, I'm also going to highlight the book in the same way. Uh, you might decide you want to highlight this with a different color, uh, but I kind of like the idea that they're a fairly similar material to one another. So, don't worry too much. You can use whatever red you sort of fancy to, to brighten this up. But this is just what I'm going to use. Now, speaking of red, I've got here some Mephiston red. And while this is a base paint, I'm actually going to use it as a highlight to a few of these little red details that we did on the lenses and what have you. As long as I can do it without uh, hitting the camera there all the time. <laughs> so this one, let's get in here and do just the center and leave the darker red around the outside. So it looks like only the center there is glowing. Now at the same time, I'd suggest grab this Mephiston red and these panels on his gauntlet that look like screens, you can paint these in now with a little bit of this Mephiston red and then we'll do something afterwards to make them stand out a bit more. Now I've got some Evil Sun Scarlet and I'm just going to paint an L shape by going along one side of the screen and then doing the same down the opposite. Now that gives me a nice straight line. And what I'll do is sort of a curve that joins the two of them together. It won't be perfect, but it'll help make that look as though it's actually lit up. See, easy peasy. I'm not going to do that on the other one because that's uh, <laughs> just underneath his arm there. Red is enough for that, if I'm honest. If you wanted to be fussy, you could finish it off though. After that, we'll move on to the brassy stuff. And I've got here Liberator Gold. And all I'm going to do is just touch in the very edges of some of these areas I want that brassy stuff to look super bright. It's easy to go overboard on this. Um, personally, I like quite a bright look. But as with all of these sorts of highlights, what you want to do is add just a little bit at first. And then you can decide whether or not you want to go with more. Okay, so I'm going to go around now and touch in all of these brassy areas with a little bit of this Liberator Gold. Then with the brassy stuff done, we're going to do the rest of his armor. We're going to start with Lauren Forest. And what you want to do is where you can, just using the edge of your brush, go along these hardest edges of the armor and pick out the very edges there. And that'll give you a really cool, sharp line without having to worry too much about where the tip of your brush is going. Just Make sure you're not accidentally painting on his fatigues. Now this can be a little bit time consuming because you want to go around and do all of the green armor and his gun in the same style. So take your time, but this will look really cracking once it's finished. Now there's the highlights on his armor done and you can see how much that brings that color back up too. Makes it look much more green than it did previously. Now as a quick note, if you happened to be doing the fang for your base coat on your uh, armor there, just highlight it with rust gray. And again, completely the same technique, everything else exactly as we've done it so far. So what we'll do now is we'll go on and we'll do his fatigues. So when we're doing his fatigues, instead of going up with a highlight, we're actually gonna go back to Zandri Dust and just use this as a way to tidy up the, 
the clothing while leaving the recesses all shaded with Agrax Earthshade. I tend to think with these guys, if you go really bright on the highlights on their clothing, it can make the fatigues look a little funny. So all I'm doing is just going back over this very carefully and leaving those cool shaded areas behind. So it's up to you if you want to go up a little bit higher. And if you do want to highlight the extreme edges, I'd probably suggest Ushabti Bone. But I'm going to go around now, finish this off and see what we're left with. Now looking at the back of his fatigues, you can see how by leaving the shading behind and just painting over the top with that base color again, we've got that nice depth. I could go ahead and highlight it with a little Shabti bone, but honestly I think there's so little of it on the model that it wouldn't add much overall. If you do want to though, your Shabti bone's what I'd use. Anyhow, what we'll get onto now is the face, and we'll grab some Cadian flesh tone, funnily enough, <laughs> painting a Cadian after all, and let's just get in here. So because these guys have got so much detail packed into their faces, all you want to do is leave behind those recesses where the wash is settled, and go over the top with the rest with Cadian flesh tone. I'm going to do this without the camera in the way though. <laughs> now that didn't go quite as planned if I'm honest. I ended up going a little bit overboard and kind of clodging in some of the detail that I had wanted to leave behind. Luckily, that actually gives me an opportunity to show off one of the ways you can fix this. I've got here some Reichland Flesh Shade. Now, under normal circumstances, I'd probably just leave the skin and move on. But because I want this guy to look pretty cool, I've got my detail brush, my small layer brush, and I'm just going to lightly go over the skin again with this Reichland Flesh Shade. I don't want to leave a huge amount of it behind. Like, I don't really want to uh, to completely recolor the skin. What I want is just to get a little bit of warmth and depth back in that skin, rather than that really flat Cadian flesh tone that I had left behind. So, now that that shade's dry, I can get in and highlight the face like I normally would, with a little bit of Kislev flesh, just concentrating on the very edges of detail. So... Chin, nose, brow, and cheeks. And there we go. A little bit more stylized than usual. <laughs> you know, it's not quite how I wanted it to turn out, but just to demonstrate, you can fix these things. You know, you can come back from these mistakes. So I've got my Dawnstone next, and we're going to go ahead and just very carefully do the edges of these gray details. And to be honest, you don't need to do very much with these. I would probably just restrict myself to these little square bits on the baffle here. And, uh, you know, you can do as much of this as you want, though. So any of those Eschen Grey bits that we did earlier, just a little bit of Dawnstone to pick out the edges on those now. now this one's kind of optional, but grab yourself some Gawthor Brown and any of the leather that you want to highlight, you can get in there now. And just do thin bits of that to add a little bit of texture to that brown. And then finally grab your Stormhost Silver and just any of these metal details you really want to shine. Just using the edge of your brush. There you go. You can get in there and give a nice hard edge to those details. So cruise around and as much of this as you want to do, just make that metal shine. Okay, I lied. <laughs> the final, final step is get yourself some white scar and just touch in tips of your eagle here and just flick down the edges of the wings to create that impression that they've been painted properly let's say and if you're careful you can get in and we'll just touch the very edges of his teeth let's see if i can do that on the camera you know what i'm i'm going to do that without the camera and there we go with those last details done our kazakin or Stormtrooper, or Tempestus Scion, <laughs> is complete. Now you can go ahead and spend ages on these guys. They are packed with detail, and each of them is a little bit different, meaning you've got a squad full of heroes that you can paint up as you like. You may notice I didn't do anything else to the boots as well. Once I had those, you know, with the Dark Reaper dry brush over the top, same too with these cables. You know, with the washes that we did, you just don't have to touch them. So... If you're a little bit more careful when putting the base coats on these guys, you'll find them much easier to finish, I think. 
So as ever, if you found anything useful, you know, you can drop a comment down there in the old YouTube box. Both my Twitter and Facebook are linked there too. And as well, there's How I Patreon. So if you want to chip in, you know, would be much appreciated. So to cap it all off, I'm going to grab a couple of photos of this guy, finish off his base. And as ever, guys, thank you very much for your time. You enjoy the rest of your day.